Hi everybody. So today we are going to do um, another video, and the video today is going to be of my course lesson 158. Today I learn to give as I receive. So it's been a day or so since I've done a video, so I'm thankful I'm back on board. Um, I find that the weekends typically um, are filled with a lot of um, out and about, going to see a lot of people, so I am um, thankful to take this time now to connect with you guys and um, to allow us to really learn with one another um, the process of undoing our ego mind. And um, I'm recognizing that within my course lessons now and the shift that has taken is we are basically in the phase of acceptance. and. Um, you know, going through a phase of accepting who we really are and asking spirit to to tell us. And um, we are learning how to do that and how to get rid of all barriers between us and the truth. And, um, you know, the Course allows us to learn forgiveness together with one another. And every time I do one of these talks, whether it be on a video, whether it be in a group, whether it be um, on Gather, um, it is an opportunity to hear my own internal teacher share with you guys. And as I hear the messages that need to be brought forward, I too am learning and listening and absorbing. So I'm thankful for this opportunity to open up and um, see what comes forward. So let's get started. Today I learned to give as I receive. The golden rule, people. As we give, we know we have it. And therefore, to have all, give all to all. So here we go. What has been given you? The knowledge that you are a mind. In mind and purely mind. Sinless forever. Wholly unafraid because you were created out of love. Nor have you left your source, remaining as you were created. This was given you as knowledge which you cannot lose. It was given as well to every living thing, for by that knowledge only does it live. So this first paragraph here, Jesus is sharing with us what has been given us what has already been freely given us. That the truth of us as souls, as love, as creations of our Creator is truth. That is the gift that has been given us. And when we remember the gift that has been given us, we can there remember the gift that we are entailed to share. And it is the truth of us as souls that come from this source here to experience this physical world for a moment in time so that we may go back to source. And there is one purpose and one reason all of us as souls have come to this earth. And this purpose is now being relived moment by moment by the people here because they are remembering that this whole entire worldly structure outside of ourselves and everything that has to do with it is a dream. And that when we come together as souls to remember who we really are, we remember that this was a dream that we all chose to experience because we wanted to experience what it was like to be separate from each other and separate from our Creator. And in having this world, we are able to be that perfect depiction of separation through these separate bodies, living in these separate homes, living in these separate lives. And it seems to be that now is the time when all of these living things have recognized that up until now that we have been dead. That when we are in the mind that is separate from God, in the mind that created this physical world, then we are in the mind that can suffer, experience pain, you know, chaos, and dies. And we recognize that this false identity is not the truth of who we are. So when we start to question what we have been taught in our life, when we start to question who we think we are, when we start to question what our life purpose is, 
is when we start to activate the calling center of the universe within us. And we send out this bellowing call, you know, this call to awaken. And um, I think this world on a massive global scale is feeling this call to awaken. And we're recognizing that the way things have been done in the past is not working. And that the way in which we have set up this civilization and hierarchy and separation and discord and defense and attack and, and all of these like laws that man abides by, we recognize that they are falsities because they all were created from a fear-based mind. I am afraid that I'm going to get t attacked because I am this body and I could potentially die. Therefore, I must defend myself and I must protect myself with all this armor and these bom bombs and these these guards and, and, you know, locks on our doors and all of these things because we are afraid of our brother. What the Course teaches you is how to let go of every obstacle that's standing between us and the truth of reality. Get rid of whatever is standing between us and our brother and us and God. And the only thing that is standing in between us is our thoughts of separation, right? So when we look at and question every single thought that we may have, we are able to see the insanity of it and then let it go. We start to recognize that we are more than our thoughts. We are more than what we believe. We are more than what we were taught and what we read in books. And when we become open to learning who we really are and the knowledge and the power that we really have, then we can let go of what we think that we know and embrace the true knowledge which is of God. And when we remember that we are in God, always in God, never possible, it's not even possible to leave God, then we become open to accept this knowledge from Him to us and through us. It says, this knowledge that is of God, you have received all of this. No one who walks the world but has received it. If we are living, we have received it because God is life. Okay? It is not this knowledge which you give, for that is what creation gave. It is the truth. We all have this truth within us. It is not this truth that we give. It's not really this knowledge that we give because this knowledge is already known within us, right? All this cannot be learned. What, then, are you to learn to give today? Our lesson yesterday evoked a theme found earlier in the text. Experience cannot be shared directly in the way that vision can. Right? So the experiences that we have within ourselves, within our own mind, that join us with our Creator, right? That remind us that we are souls, right? These experiences is something that has to be experienced within the self and with our Father. You know, or with the voice for God within us, or with Jesus. These are not things that are learned, or that we teach, because this is a personal experience that we all have, and can have, right? Um, so, uh, uh, vision is what can be shared. We can all see, you know, Christ in our brothers, and therefore see Christ in ourselves. This vision is a universal vision that we are all capable of. And then as we choose to see through true vision, instead of our sight with our physical eyes, then we are choosing to see through the mind of Christ, to see through the mind of our Creator, instead of seeing through the mind that is separate. Okay? The revelation that the Father and the Son are one will come in time to every mind. Yet it is that determined but yet that time determined by the mind itself is not taught. The time is set already. You remember, there's a plan going on here. This is God's plan. He has this idea for us, right? It appears to be quite arbitrary. Yet there is no step along the road that anyone but takes by chance. Hmm. <laughs> it has already been taken by him, although he has not yet embarked on it. For time but seems to go in one direction. We but undertake a journey that is over. Yet it seems to have a future still unknown to us. And so the reason that this journey is already over is because God has already created the plan. And the plan is ultimately for us to awaken and to remember who we really are. Right? And that 
you know, we are all here and we're dreaming this collective sleep. And before we all fully, fully awaken and leave these bodies for good and leave this world for good and go do our little soul thing, right? What we need to do, as God promised us, right, is that we can experience a happy dream before we fully wake up. So right now, this dream is of death. You know, we see wars and chaos and murders and rapes and all of this stuff, which is an extension of the fear mind, right? But as souls, we also have the opportunity and the possibility to experience life as heaven on earth, to experience life as this happy dream, where we have those feelings and emotions of love and giving and receiving and joy and happiness and abundance like all these things are what we are capable of experiencing when we choose to live life with God instead of opposite from him right so this is what God calls for us this is what the plan already consists of so we have already completed it in essence because it's bound to happen no matter what right but the truth is, is it looks like we are living it for the first time. And it looks like that this is just a blind path that we are taken on. And yet even though it's perceived by the ego mind to be a blind path because it doesn't know what to anticipate next, the truth is it's set up in such a perfect strategic fashion that, you know, everything is happening exactly as it should at the perfect time that it should so that the perfect people meet, so the perfect things happen, so that, you know, it unfolds before us, right? Um, yeah, exponentially growing, <laughs> right? Says, the time is already set, yet it appears to be quite arbitrary. Yet there is no step along the road that anyone but takes by chance. It has already been taken by him, although he has not yet embarked on it. For time but seems to go in one direction. We would undertake a journey that is over, yet it seems to have a future still unknown to us. Time is a trick, a slay of hand, a vast illusion in which figures come and go as if by magic. Yet there is a plan behind appearances which does not change. Remember, God is changeless. He's infinite. He's eternal. You know, so if things change in our external world or in our lives, that is because that is just a reflection of the dream mind. You know, that changeless is of God. So we have to recognize that God has created a plan that is changeless and we cannot escape it. No matter what, we are here to learn particular lessons. We have a curriculum set out for us. We don't know what that curriculum is, but we are also willingly accept it when we recognize we don't know what it is, but we're willing to learn it, right? Because, you know... Spirit is just waiting for us to be that vessel in which they can guide our lives through us, right? Because really we don't know, but when we join with the one mind with our creator and our brothers and sisters, then we are guided, we are led by this universal power that created us effortlessly because it is in us, right? It says, the script is written. When experience will come to an end, your doubting has been set. For we but see the journey from the point at which it ended, looking back on it, imagining we make it once again, reviewing mentally what has gone by. It says the teacher does not give experience because he did not learn it. It revealed itself to him at its appointed time. That's the thing. We don't learn these truths of who we are. It's the truth of who we are. So when we are willing to have these experiences, what happens is like the veils of illusion lift. And then for ourselves, within our own mind, we have the experience of what truth is, of what reality is, of what God is, of what we are. Right now, these are experiences that happen with us and for us. And it's already part of the plan. It's already part of the universal plan. And we just have to recognize that every now moment, we have the opportunity to choose what we really want. Right? Every single moment. Every single moment is brand new. It doesn't matter what we've chosen in the past or what we've done in the past or what we have tried in the past. All that matters is right here, right now. And in this moment right here, right now, is when we can reevaluate what we were considering as valuable in the past so we may open to what is truly valuable.